Good morning, Booktube YouTube. This is Johnny. It, time to make a video. It is this morning. It is April the 14th, 2024. It is 8.44 in the morning. It's a Sunday morning here in Southwest Michigan. Spring-like weather the last couple of days. Everything is blooming green. And uh, I'm wearing my old glasses. My new glasses are not working. They're, I have to go back this week and uh, try to get them adjusted again. So uh, writing in my diary, I'm on page 334 this morning in my 2024 paper diary. And uh, I thought what I would do in this video, I mentioned that my wife and I, in our morning devotions, uh, the old saying goes, a family that prays together stays together. <laughs> yeah, I think if, if people prayed together, husbands and wives, families, fathers and sons, mothers and daughters, Friends, if they prayed together, really prayed, not only just uh, out of routine, but really prayed from their heart that a lot of things would be resolved. But, um, yeah, since my wife retired almost three or four years ago, now we have devotions constantly very regularly my wife is a is very regimental <laughs> she follows a uh she's very busy she's very active and everything has to go in sequence in chronological order uh, she plans out her whole week over there by her chair she has everything planned out what she's going to do sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday and she keeps a date book and times and whereas me i i just kind of just drift through the day here in the hermit hut i i like a very quiet simple life i well and one thing i recognize are people out there and who are who watch these videos are very busy I mean, it's nothing wrong being busy because if you're you have, you go through your, your, you you go to college where you have <clears throat> you have a job and and you have relationships and you have friendships and you have social engagements and you have careers and all kinds of things and so life becomes very busy and because uh, I know our children our, we have three children they're married and have families and we know that they're very busy working and raising their family and doing all kinds of things but me now in my old age i i kind of like this is the kind of life i've always wanted to live was just stay home and just read and write pray read the bible so this morning i thought what i would do <clears throat> i get clear my throat and in the mornings i always wake up i always got this stuff in my throat Anyway, I mentioned to you that my wife and I were going through the Gospel of John. <clears throat> and I thought what I'd do, I mean, sometimes I come across videos in booktube, people reading through the Bible. And they read through the Old Testament, and they read through the New Testament, and they read through the Gospels. They go through the Gospel of Matthew, and the Gospel of Mark, and the Gospel of Luke, and the Gospel of John. And you watch these videos and they don't really know anything about the Gospels. They're atheists. They're, they don't believe in God. They don't believe that the Lord Jesus Christ uh, lived on this earth and was incarnated, the Son of God, and that he died on the cross for sinners and that on the third day he rose again. And then 50 days afterwards he ascended into heaven and now he reigns. They don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. They basically hate him, and they basically, even though they read the Bible, 
they believe the Bible just to be the word of man and they don't they hate the Bible but they just read it because it's kind of like I don't know maybe they just try to show their hatred for God by or they're just intellectually just interested in this Bible same as they would read the Quran or they would read some kind of the Book of Mormons or some other religious they consider it some kind of religious work and they just read it as a work of fiction <laughs> but me as a Christian I see the Word of God this is the Word of God this is the revelation of God and the Gospel of John is what we're reading through right now and I thought what I would do and show you in my videos is that I have loved the Gospel of John. I've been a Christian going on 54 years. And when I was in Bible college and seminary, I took cl classes on the Gospel of John. And I have studied the Gospel of John all these many years. And I thought what I would do is just show you some of my commentaries on the Gospel of John. First of all, I want to show you the one uh, the ones I used in Bible College. When I was in Bible College, the Reformed Bible College, which, which is now Kuiper College in Grand Rapids, Michigan, we used in our uh, semester study of the Gospel of John, Leon Morris's, uh, the New International Commentary in the New Testament according to John by Leon Morris. This is a very good basic commentary it's not really highly academic but it's kind of like in the middle it's not light and it's not heavy he also if you want something really for devotions is this one he wrote this four volumes uh leon morris his reflections on the gospel of john volume one the word was made flesh john one through five and then he did volume two the bread of life John 6 through 10 by Leon Morris. And then he wrote volume 3, The True Vine, John 11 through 16 by Leon Morris. And then he wrote volume 4, The Crucified and Risen, volume 4, The Reflections on the Gospel of John, John 17 through 21 by Leon Morris. So these are good to have, just a basic commentary on John. <coughs> And then when I was in seminary in Jackson, Mississippi, Reformed Theological Seminary, back almost it's going on 40 years ago now, we used uh, Raymond Brown's commentary. This is a, a Roman Catholic. He's a, a, New a, a Roman Catholic New Testament scholar, Raymond Brown. And this is his two volumes in the Anchor series, The Gospel of John. Accord, the Gospel According to John, chapters 1 through 12, a new translation with introduction and commentary by Raymond Brown. And then the Gospel According to John, John 13 through 21, a new translation with introduction and commentary by Raymond Brown. Yeah, we use these in seminary, use these. And then I... These are the ones I bought over the years in my study of John. I bought these in, in seminary. This is uh, Rudolf Schackenberg, his three volume commentary on the Gospel of John, a Gospel according to John, volume one. This is more technical, but it's worth having if you're into the Gospel of John. Gospel according to John, volume 1. And then you have Schackenberg, the Gospel according to John, volume 2. Very kind of large print. Uh, and then you have volume 3, a Gospel according to John by Schackenberg. So this is a more technical, kind of dry, but I do recommend anything by Schackenberg. And then this is uh, Craig S. Keener. He is a 
conservative uh, Pentecostal New Testament scholar. He's written on the Gospel of Matthew. I have him on... I have a lot, he wrote a massive commentary on the Acts of the Apostles, which is probably maybe 6,000 pages. But this is his work on the Gospel of John, two volumes by Craig S. Keener. The Gospel of John, a commentary. He's very good his, for his, historically and word studies and things like that. And uh, he's conservative, evangelical, and this is volume 2, a gospel of John, commentary volume 2 by Greg Keener. This is good to have too if you're in the gospel of John. And then this is a more, uh, this is by a Baptist scholar and the word biblical commentary on the gospel of John. This one I have not really used that much over the years. I have this whole series, the Word Biblical Commentaries. I have the whole series on the New Testament. This is volume 36. <laughs> so, well, I don't know. I don't have much in the Old Testament on the Gospel, on, but yeah, this is volume 36 out of 51 volumes in the Word Biblical Commentary series. They go through the Old and New Testament. I don't really care for much for the Old Testament. They're, um, some of them are good. Maybe on Genesis by Gordon J. Winham on Genesis is good in the Word. And most of these people I wouldn't... I just... You know, there's not that many good commentaries in the Old Testament, but there are a lot in the New Testament. So this is one I really haven't used, but I have other books by uh, George Beasley Murray. He wrote a book. He's written a lot of books. Uh, Baptism in the New Testament, Jesus in the Kingdom of God, Jesus in the Future. Those things I have in my, in my library. Uh, this is in the, the NIV applica application commentary on the Gospel of John by Gary M. Berg. He's written uh, monograms in books on John, which I have. He wrote a book, uh, The Anointed Community, The Holy Spirit and the Johannian Tradition, Interpreting the Gospel of John. And then he has in the NIV application commentary series on first the letters of John, the, uh, the John 1, uh, the epistles of John, uh, 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John. But I, I've read his book on the, uh, the anointed community, the Holy Spirit, and the Johannian tradition, which I recommend. But this is uh, another good, this, this has application. So when it goes, it goes to the text of the Gospel of John, and then at the end of his exposition, he has a section called the original meaning, and then he has application. He applies it to contemporary culture. That's what he does. It's more an applicate. He applies what he's expounded in the text. I've showed you these, the ones I've been reading in the morning, J.C. Ryle, we just got these a couple weeks ago, Expository Thoughts on the Gospels. It's on Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The one on John is three volumes. This is good just for lay people. If you want a, a devotional commentary, if you want to just your own personal study in the morning, and you don't want to get really bogged down in something really heavy, I recommend J.C. Ryle. Like I said, I've been reading volume two in the mornings on John. So this is a good basic have in your library. And then I, I rec I've been reading also, I showed you John Baker, Exegetical Commentary on the New Testament by Andreas J. Kost Kostenberger. Kostenberger. This is a, uh, 
I like this commentary. I, I like that, and I've been reading this in the morning. He also, I have in my study his book, uh, Theology of the John's Gospel and Letters, Biblical Theology, New Testament by Andreas J. Kistenbarger, The Word, the Christ, and the Son of God. I keep, I keep these by my desk in my main study. So these are good things to have. If you want just a thorough knowledge, have Ryle and have Kistenbacher. And then I also been reading off and on on John. <clears throat> There's this book, Johannian Theology, the Gospel, the Epistles, and the Apocalypse, as we know that the, the Apostle John wrote the Revelations of Jesus Christ, the last book in the New Testament. He wrote the Gospel of John, he wrote 1st and 2nd John, 3rd John, and he wrote the Apocalypse, the Revelation of Jesus Christ. And this is this is really good. I, I was reading it the other morning, the chapter on the Revelation of God the Father in the Gospel of John. So, recommend this. And then, if you want to look at the uh, you know one thing I tell people look at old and new commentaries I mean there are uh, and one of the one of the I like is the Reformation commentary on scripture this is two volumes on the Gospel of John so you can look at what the reformers or what commentators because the, the reformation commentators they have they they look at all these the reformers the puritans the anabaptists the lutherans the catholics and they they go through and they just select from these commentaries and homilies and sermons uh little paragraphs or expositions of the text and so you get kind of the history of the interpretation of the text in the Gospel of John. I really recommend these two for devotions. They're not really heavy. They were edited and they put out for lay people. Uh, I wouldn't be uh, frightened of them. They're worth having. Uh, but if you want something more if you want something, I would kind of read the uh, Kistenbacher along with the Reformation commentary. I would read something modern and something old. That's what I would do. I also have this in my main study. I like, this is, there's not one on every book of the Bible. This is by published by Erdman's, and this is the Church's Bible. Uh, editor by Robert Louis Wilkins, who is an authority on early Christianity and new church history. But he edited this series, and this one is John, interpreted by early Christians, Christian and medieval commentators, uh, translators and editors, Brian A. Stewart and Michael A. Thomas. I kind of like this series. I wish they put more out. They've only put out a few. I think on Isaiah, uh, the Song of Solomon. I think they put one on uh, Matthew, I think, or I can't remember it, but this was on John. So these are kind of good to, like, you know, read this one on John, and then you can compare it with something more technical like like I would read like you know read Leon Moore's A Gospel According to John and then just read this along with it <laughs> or read uh, J.C. Ryle or read you know, something you know old and new that's what I like and then you get but you'll find, as you read through all these commentaries on the Gospel of John, you'll basically see an agreement. Because the Gospel of John 
is basically has, it's an historical account of the life and death of Christ and also his teachings and uh, so and if these commentators from the you know early church the medieval the reformation time the 19th century 20th century if they're Christians they all have God the Holy Spirit and who they're looking to to teach them and to guide them into the truth and illuminate their minds and they look at other commentators I mean we read the Bible we read the Gospel of John in the context of the communion of the Saints you know we we read the Bible in the light of what other Christians have taught and preached and wrote about in the Gospel of John you know we don't we don't we don't read the Bible in isolation of the communion of the of the saints I mean we read the Bible and we interpret it in the light of what other Christians have written and said and preached and throughout the centuries uh, there's a there we confess and believe what has been revealed in Scripture and uh, so the medieval commentators looked to their church fathers. The Reformation commentators looked to the medieval. The, the 17th, 18th, and 19th century Bible commentators looked at what the church had said and written in commentaries on the Gospel of John. And also, when, the, when a, 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 a scholar or a New Testament scholar or interprets the Bible or, or the Gospel of John, the rule of faith governs their exegesis and how they interpret Scripture. What has the church confessed for 2,000 years? You have the Athanasian Creed, you have the Nicene Creed, you have, uh, you have these confessions, the, the Westminster Confession of Faith, the Heidelberg, the Belgic, the Cans of Dort, you have all of these uh, statements of faith by the Lutherans and what what uh, the basic Christian beliefs of who Christ is and who God is and what is sin and what did Christ accomplish on the cross and what is the work of the Holy Spirit what is the doctrine of creation what is the doctrine of sin what does it mean to be converted what is repentance what is faith what does it mean to live a holy life these things are in general agreement because they go to the Bible. What does the Bible teach about God? What does the Bible teach about the Trinity? What does the Bible teach about sin? What does the Bible teach about who Christ is, the Son of God, the Messiah? What does the Bible teach about the end times, eschatology? What does the Bible teach about ecclesiology? What is the, how is the church structured? The offices of the church. Uh, teaching and ruling elders and all things like this but it's good to to have in your mind what the church and what have Christians have written in commentaries throughout church history so that's what I do I keep these most of these I keep down in my lower level but I keep this one in my study and I keep this in my study and I keep these in my study the Reformation and I keep John's letters in my study and I keep Ryle in my study and these I look at when I'm going through the Gospel of John I can't go in depth because we have to get through the New Testament but I'm always diving in and trying to find new things. So I just thought I'd show you my commentaries on the Gospel of John and you know I have a huge Christian library. I'm not a minister. I'm just a lay person. I'm an old saint. I love the Bible so I've been studying the Bible for 54 years and you can't understand the Bible if you don't love Jesus Christ. You can't understand the Bible if you're not born again. You can't understand the scriptures if you hate God and you're not living according to the Word of God. 
Why should God reveal himself to a person who hates him? Why should God open the scriptures in its true meaning to those who already have look at the Bible as just a same kind of book as reading a book by Gore Vidal? <laughs> you know, why would why should they because some Christians say that the Bible is a love letter to the saints. I mean, why should God reveal himself in all his glory and beauty to someone who says, I, I hate you, God. You know, I don't want to live in obedience to what you revealed in your word. I don't want to bow my knee to the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I don't want to forsake sin and begin to walk in a way that pleases, pleases the Lord God. So, so when they read the Bible, they might, they just, their mind is darkened. But if you're a Christian and you've been born again and repented of your sins and put your faith in Christ, and you come to the Word of God and you come to it saying, Oh God, Holy Spirit, open the Word to my heart and to my mind. Teach me, illuminate my mind, and give me a love for God's Word. Open up its riches that I might understand it and that I might not only understand it, and love it, but walk in the walk in obedience to what you revealed in your word, and walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, not in my own strength, but to walk in the power of the Spirit. So anyway, I just thought I'd show you my commentaries on the Gospel of John. Do pray you're having a good Sunday. You have a good reading week. I have over there a big stack of used books that I'll show in a future video, maybe tonight. When my wife's at the evening worship service, I'll show those. So I hope you're having a good Sunday. Have a good new reading week. Thank you for your comments. Until next time, bye.